All right, good morning, good evening, whatever the case may be. Um, this time around, we're going to do a quick setup of uh, our Lego minifigure uh, scene. Uh, we're, really, we're not going to do much modeling here. I'm just going to show you how to set the project, um, set up your reference planes in proper layers, and get started. So step one is going to be to go ahead and, and do a, a new project. So we're going to go to the project window. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, I'm going to try and get a new project. Lego minifig is a good enough name. And this will cover a few weeks worth of work for us. Accept that. We'll go and set our project. And then just to be sure, we'll go ahead and save our nothing we've already done. So I started with a new scene here. We can save scene as. And sure enough, our project's set right. So it's saying the Lego minifig scenes. And we'll just say just the model for now. Save that. All right, really our biggest thing to do here is we're going to set up our, our reference planes for our images. So I'm going to make a plane. Um, I'm going to cut down on the subdivisions there. And because I've already done the, the groundwork for you, um, I'm going to go ahead and say, well, actually I'm not going to get there yet. So I'm just going to make this plane. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and make sure that my units are set. So I'm going to go to Maya Preferences and Settings <clears throat> and the the blueprints we have for a Lego minifigure are in millimeters so we're going to go ahead and set that to millimeters just to make sure we're all on the same page. Actually our square grew um, by 10, 10 points. So we're going to make those 54 by 54 which is how many millimeters uh, our texture is for the reference plane. So that's great. Let's go ahead and we'll just call this, let's name it now while we're in the neighborhood. Uh, reference image, and we'll just call this front. I'm gonna right click on this. My mouse is set up. There we go. Click it, right click. I'm going to assign it a new material. It's going to be a Lambert. Um, we're going to immediately name this thing Actually, it doesn't matter front or back. Let's call it Blueprint because we're going to reuse it. Same image. So that's fine. We'll name the texture. Make sure you hit Enter before you start doing anything else. Set the color to a file and go out and find that image name. So that you should have downloaded this from Canvas. Um, I've got mine saved in my documents folder out here at the root. So it's Lego white square. And there you can see is our, our blueprint for our guy. And it's even got some measurements on there for us. I'm going to open that up. And I come back over here and hit the number six. We should be able to see it. Sure enough. So there we go. Um, we're going to start to position this, get him in place. He's all textured. Go 90. <clears throat> Zoom in on him. So I'm going to try to bring him up so his feet are on the plane. Just for easier reference later, I'm going to hit the space bar start looking at other views. So if I got my mouse in here and hit space again, I'll zoom in at 6, F. Actually, he looks like he's sitting right on that solid line pretty well. So we must have done something right. Come back to perspective. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull that back a bit to give us room to work. A 
let's say 15. So we don't want to intersect with it when we're modeling, um, but when we're actually really looking at it and using it, um, we'll probably be in one of the, the more 2D views anyway. Okay, so we've got the front reference image. I'm gonna pull him now over so that he's centered over the, the other middle line. <coughs> Um, using a you know the, our typical combination of spacebar and and the F key, and I don't know how well it's going to show up on the video, but um, I can see the more solid line here, and I'm lining that up right down between his legs, center of his head. So our front image is spaced properly. I come up here, hit spacebar, and really all we're going to do is. Command D or Control D. Want to duplicate this guy? Rename him. Here's our side image, and let's flip him around. Very nice. I'll just move him a little bit so he is also kind of centered a bit over that line. My side view was actually the back of it. Didn't want to mess with it. So this will work um, close enough for now. And that will give us a lot to work with. If we need to later, we can pull this guy out. Whoa. Make sure to do it on the axis. Uh, I'm going to do it now. I'm going to pull him out a bit. It'll give us plenty of room to work. And now the real trick is going to be grabbing these guys. So I'm going to Shift click, make sure I get both of them. Come into my layer editor, and what I'm going to do is use this last bit here. As I hover over, it says create new layer and assign selected objects. So great, let's do that. We want this to be our new layer. We'll even name it. Reference planes. Love to name things so I know what the heck is going on. Um, we'll set that to a white outline so even when it's selected, it'll look all cool. Save that, and then the key here is going to be go to this reference planes and start clicking on this third box. So T is a kind of a template, which just means you can see the object. Now R is reference, conveniently enough. So with that, I can't select this. I can't accidentally select it when I'm creating things. Um, it is just a reference. So very safe. Can't get it confused with stuff. This is cool stuff. I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. Name it our model layer. I don't know why I wanted to capitalize that. I need to figure out what naming convention I like there. And we can start modeling. Um, just real quick, I'm going to go ahead and make a box or two to make sure that our scaling is correct. So I've got a cube. And if we go down here and look, it says we uh, in this texture reference here that there's 15.4 millimeters um, from the one side of his leg to the other so we're just going to check that right just to make sure we did this right so i've got my box we go to the attribute editor polycube we go 15.4 all the way down the line Actually, no, we're just going to leave that one alone. We'll put that up to two. All right. <clears throat> Here's going to be the trick. Space bar. Space in here. Let's zoom in on this guy. And actually make him somewhat transparent. You can see we've got edge to edge. Looks like 15.4. So we did our scaling right. Uh, you're welcome. So that works. I don't need this guy. I'm going to go ahead and delete him. But I am going to use him to check and see that uh, he's not in my he's not in my model layer. 
Interesting. So we created him layerless. So one thing we could do, if we wanted to, uh, we may use this. You know, I'm just going to let this hang around. I'm going to use this later. So I can, I've got it selected here. I can come over to the model layer and just say add selected objects. Now it's unselectable, right? Now we just turn that off. So I've got my model layer. <coughs> Very helpful to have layers to work with. So uh, using this template, go ahead and, and finish creating the Lego character. Um, just as a hint, uh, I believe my first step will be to start with a cylinder, right? That looks like this hip joint here and uh, extrude some of the faces down and flatten them out. And I think we'll have the leg, but I'll let you figure the rest out. Look forward to seeing what you create. Just remember that uh, we are not going to be bothering to texture or, or color this. So just give me your, your default gray character to scale here with this reference image. And while you're at it for this week, go ahead and add any hair, helmets, swords, capes, uh, whatever you need in the way of extra models uh, to make this your custom Lego minifigure. Have fun.